everyone. I am going to try something a little different. I decided I'm going to start looking at the preludes and fugues in book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier. And I decided that I was going to try to learn the G major prelude really quickly. So I spent a half an hour before I um, decided to record this. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to walk you through what I discovered about this prelude. And then I'm going to put it together, probably a little under tempo, but I want to show how really understanding what patterns are involved can really speed up the learning process. So here goes. All right, so at the beginning, you've got a very simple bass line. For like two measures all right and in the right hand it's all arpeggios that outline um, four five different chords so here we go so here's the first chord hand is going to take over very briefly that 16th note arpeggiated passage. So it'll be this. Uh, let's see. Um, mostly a D major chord, but you do have a B at the end. Anyway, then the next thing you're going to get is a new motive and it's outlining a rising scale in the right hand. So here we go. And the left hand has just an eighth note accompaniment. Now the left hand is gonna do that same little motive, but I'm actually taking it in my right hand because it makes it a little bit easier. similar. The next measure we go back into more arpeggiated material with an octave eighth note thing in the left hand. And that's all outlining one chord. Then in the next measure it takes a whole measure to outline A minor but it switches hands. straightforward. Um, yeah. The next measure outlines one chord again. Right hand has the sixteenths. But there is one note that's thrown in there that breaks up the mix and that's that B natural. any notes that stick out as different. Next measure, we have the same returning material of this. Okay. Next measure, uh, the right hand gets it again. It's the rising one this time. a new motive. You're going to, it's like a ping pong game here. You're going to have the 16th arpeggios in the left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, and so forth. Now we have a new little motive. that's going to happen again and again. Meanwhile, the left hand is doing an arpeggiated figure. There, we'll end there. <laughs> Next one, it's going to repeat that same pattern, but up a step. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. 
There's also a repeated note in the left hand, and that's what caught me off guard. So let's do that again. So while the right hand is going straight down the scale, the right hand has a repeated note. Now we have another pattern. Again, it's a little bit of a ping pong match, except it's a little different because the right hand has constant 16th notes. changes it up. So the right hand actually has the pattern for quite a while. straightforward and simple, built on just a few motives. So now let's see what happens if I go ahead and I try to play through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. 